fitnatun nisa and this is from the greatest of trials and tribulations and it is a cause of leaving of leading many many people to turn away from the truth to turn away from the truth and to neglect the truth and the evidence for this is in the Quran zuyyina lin nas yuhubbu ash-shahawati min an-nisa'i wal banin beautified to man to people to men is the love of lusts and desires of women and children then it continues to mention five or six other things from you know uh, gold and silver and horses ho- you know horse cavalry and cattle and harf you know which is which is vegetation and growth and tillage all of this dhalika mata'ul hayati dunya wallahu indahu husnul ma'ab so here ibn kathir he says Allah Ta'ala mentioned about those things which have been beautified for people in the life of this world of those things in which there is pleasure of women and children so he began with women because the fitna of women is the most intense as we see in the sahih in the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam ma taraktu ba'di fitnatan adar adar ala ar-rijal min an-nisa i have not left any tribulation more harmful to men than that of women and as saadi rahimahullah ta'ala he comments upon this ayah and he says that in these two verses allah azza has mentioned how many many people they prefer the world over the hereafter and he explained that there are certain things which have been beautified for them as a result of which they see them with the eyes and they find pleasure in the hearts and the pleasures of the soul revolve around them and every individual amongst mankind he has some of these pleasures which he is attached to and he makes one of or some of these pleasures his greatest concern in life so there are seven things mentioned in in this ayah women offspring gold silver horses uh, you know horses cattle and tillage you know that which grows so amongst the people are those who are attached to some of these things and they are their, they are their grow, greatest goal in this life and allah azza wa jalla he mentioned at the end of the ayah mata'ul mata'ul hayati dunya wallahu indahu husnul ma'ab that this is just the pleasure of the life of this world the enjoyment of this world but with him is the good return ibn al-qayyim comment upon, upon this as well and he said he subhanahu informed that this which is beautified the world is beautified by way of all of these lusts and desires that is only the cravings and the wishings of those who seek them over and above the hereafter and it is seven things the first is women and they are the greatest beautification of its beautification of its earth and of its lustful things and the greatest in terms of tribulation Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned in the Quran an example for the youth or for the young adult in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam and in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam Yusuf alayhi salam is put to trial by the plotting of the wife of Al Aziz and the women that that she that she had as companions and in the story there is told there is a particular situation where Yusuf alayhi salam is put to trial and he has a choice between obedience to Allah and restraining his soul and choosing prison or fulfilling or falling into that 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 obstacle and falling into that snare of that of that wife of al aziz and so he said in the time of extreme difficulty he found only one path which is the path of seeking protection in his lord and that's why he turned to allah azza wa jalla and he made istighatha to allah azza wa jalla 
And he said, قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ أَحَبُّ إِلِيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيْهِ O my Lord, the prison is more beloved to me than that which they call me to. وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنْ أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِنَّ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And if you do not turn away their plot from me, I will incline towards them and I will become from those who are ignorant. فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ فَصَرَفَ عَنْهُ كَيْدَهُنْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ So then Allah, He responded to his dua and He turned him away from their plot. Indeed, He is all hearing and all knowing. In this story is an example for the youth that they read this story and they look at Yusuf Islam with all of his beauty and the situation in which he was put and he made istighatha to his Lord to be protected because he felt in him that he was inclined towards that. But Allah Azawajal, because he resorted to him, he made istighatha to him, he made dua to him, resorted to him, then he was saved from this plot. And this leads us to a story which shows that if the young, young adult does not nurture himself to be careful from this trial and tribulation, then this will remain with him till his death. He will be constantly put to trial by way of this fitna. And an example is given here by way of, uh, by Ibn al-Qayyim of a man who it was said to him at the point of death, قُلْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And his only response was, أَيْنَ الطَّرِيقُ إِلَى حَمَّامِ مِنْ جَاب There's a story behind this. So there's a man, at the point of his death, he was told, say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And the only thing that would come out of his mouth is a, a line of poetry. And in this line of poetry, he would say, where is the path to the washroom of Minjab? Where is the path to the washroom of Minjab? What is the story behind this? Well, this is the story. There was a man, he was stood by his door. And a young girl walked past by him and she had an appearance, a nice appearance. And she said to him, where is the path? Aina tariq ila hammami minjab. Where is, where, is, where is the path to the, wash, the washroom of minjab? So he said, this is it right here. This is it right here. So she entered into the house, this, this place, and he walked right behind her, and then he closed the door. And so she knew that she had been deceived and that he had lured her into, into his house. So, being smart and shrewd and being clever, she said, she started making a display of happiness, that she's very happy and, you know, that they've managed to be alone together. So she said, don't you think that we should have some things that we can enjoy first, that we can, you know, and uh, that we can take pleasure in and enjoy so so the man seeing that she was pleased he said okay wait here one minute I will just go and bring some things so he left and when he left she quickly ran out of the house and escaped because he didn't lock the house from the outside so when he came back he found that she had gone and this stayed on the mind of this man his whim, his desire, it remained with him because he was remorseful of the fact that he didn't lock the door. And he kept re reciting these lines of poetry. Ya rubba qailatin yawman wa qad ta'ibat ayna tariqu ila hamami min jab. So basically he's, he's reciting in poetry that you know maybe there will be another one who will come and ask where is the path to the washroom of min jab. Right? So this hawa, this desire, it remained with him. So, he, so on one occasion, it so happened that his slave, uh, there was a, another girl who heard him recite these lines of poetry. And so she retorted with some other lines of poetry. So she said, So she said, if only you, in your haste, had only locked the door before you left. 
So when he heard this be said to him, it even increased him even further in his, in his hum, in his anxiousness and, and his desire and it remained on his mind. So this man, it remained with him until right at the end of his life, it was said to him, say la ilaha illallah, say la ilaha illallah. And the only thing that could come out of his mouth is this line of poetry, Ayn al-Tariq ila hammami min jab. This, in, this incident here, this illustration, is an indication to show that hawa, this hawa, this desire and lust, once it captures your heart, it's like a poisoned dart. If you allow it to enter your heart and captivate your heart, this is a poisoned dart. That poison now is within you. And it is extremely, extremely, extremely difficult for that poison to be removed, except as Allah shows mercy to, to, to his slave. And the lesson behind this story is that in the peak of youth, when you reach 15 in your shabab, this is the time when this is the greatest trial for you. And especially in the environment that we live in, we see as Ibn Thaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that indeed the enemies, the enemies of Islam, the enemies of Allah, the enemies of his messenger, from the, and he mentions the various factions, the Yahud, the Nasara, the Shu'iyya, the communists, and the Mushrikeen, and their likes, and their followers, and their tail ends, all of them, they are striving in the greatest of ways to put the Muslimin to trial by way of women. They call to tabarruj, meaning a display, open display of the beauty. They call to ikhtilat, open mixing. They call to degradation in morals and manners. They call to all of this by way of their pens, by way of their uh, actions, by way of their tongues and refuges from Allah. Because they know that the greatest tribulation which makes a person forgetful of Allah, forgetful of his Lord, forgetful of his religion, is by way of women. A person can be so preoccupied, addicted to this lust and this desire, that it hinders him from the path to Allah, hinders him from the path to knowledge, hinders him from the path of righteousness. And perhaps a youth will spend the whole, the better part of his, of his youth, 10, 20 years engrossed in this trial and this tribulation, unable to escape from this tribulation. And this is how great this fitna is. And you can see that in the societies in which we live, this is from the greatest of tools and weapons of those people who are, as the Shaykh said, enemies to Allah, enemies of the Messenger, who prefer wealth, power, authority, money, possession, to submitting to Allah and His Messenger. And they find that by way of the trial of women, they can, you know, uh, they, can, they can gain mastery over the people, make them buy what they want, make them follow their whims and their desires, make them obedient, make them subservient, make them lose their manhood, make them lose their rujula. And they become the weakest of animals, the dumbest of animals who are unable to think rationally because of the trial of women. This is the nature of this trial. So if you, or young adult, if you want to save your mind, if you want to save your heart, if you want to save your deen, if you want to save your, your, your iman, then upon you is to be upon caution with respect to this fitna. And that's why in the sunnah, we are recommended that a person who is able to get married has the ways and means that he should get married. If he's unable to get married, then he should have a habit of fasting on Mondays, on Thursdays, as a means of killing his desire. And we see likewise in the Sunnah, how Allah Azawajal, He is amazed at the youth who is preoccupied in his worship and obedience away from, he's not interested in these other uh, tribulations and lusts and desires. Allah is amazed at such a youth who in his youth he grows up engrossed in this worship and righteousness. So be like this. And inshallah ta'ala, if you have sabr upon this and you reach the age of 40, 50, 60, you will see the fruits of this striving against your soul. But if you submit to your soul and submit to your desires, Wallahi ikhwan, it is something that you see people are put to trial with, they can never let go of this till the end of their lives. 
And there are many, many, many examples that can be given, but perhaps this is sufficient. And know that there are people out there who want to steal your iman. They want to rob your iman. And the greatest of ways, if they cannot make you fall into shirk and kufr, is by way of the tribulation of women. So fear Allah, ya ikhwan. This is advice to myself and yourself to fear Allah with respect to this and become attached to Allah. Tawheed is the greatest weapon and worship Allah, have the taqwa of Allah and use those ways and means uh, 